What up guys, it's your boy Matt from RamseyVoice.com and I am so excited because you are going to find your voice, darn it. By the end of this video, my goal is for everybody who is watching this to find their own true real voice. And I think that this is kind of funny because like if you look up like any other videos on this subject, it's going to be like, yeah, you need to like journal and you need to like really like ask a bunch of people like what you sound like and stuff like that about how to find your voice. That's not what this video is like at all. What we're going to do is you're actually going to learn how to isolate what your voice, what your true voice that's hiding inside of you actually looks like. And I'm going to show you five steps in order to achieve that. Are you ready? Let's do it. Now you're going to get three huge things out of today's vocal lesson. Number one, you're gonna learn how everybody starts off in the journey of finding their own voice. Number two, you're also going to learn how to strip away some of the imitation and the mimicry that plagues so many singers when they're first starting off and trying to find their own authentic voice. And number three, I'm gonna show you my patented five steps. I'm gonna show you three vocal steps and two musical steps to actually find your voice today. All of that is coming up right now. Now, if you guys find this video helpful, make sure that you smash that like button, comment with the next kind of video that you wanna see me do, and subscribe and turn on notifications for this channel. Or if you want to find and improve your singing voice today, check out my complete singing course, Master Your Voice. Now, most people who start off by trying to find, trying to find their real and their authentic voice will just start off by imitating their favorite singers. And that was definitely true for me when I first started singing. I walked into my first voice lesson and I was like, I'm in love with the world through the eyes of a girl still around the morning after and in case you couldn't tell my musical heroes at the time were elliot smith and jeff buckley and tom york of radiohead all these guys that sing like super breathy every time that they sing something and my voice teacher looked at me and he was like, dude, you're a 25 year old man. Why are you singing like a 13 year old girl? And I had to admit, he was kind of right. Everything that I was singing was that, I'm in love with the world. Just that really, really wispy light sound. And I was actually afraid to try to find my own singing voice. And so really, really quickly, he started whipping me into shape and showing me what my actual voice sounded like. And I hated it at first. <laughs> because everybody's gonna say, I don't like the way that my voice sounds. I just wanna sound like my favorite singer. But the truth is that many, many people don't like the sound of their actual voice when they first start off. And that's because it doesn't sound like our idea of what our favorite singer sounds like. It sounds like us. And if you've ever listened back to yourself on your voicemail or yourself on a recording, you know what it's like to cringe at the sound of your own voice. But getting over that, getting over that psychological barrier is so important. So my teacher taught me to go from that, I'm in love, with the world to singing with a fuller voice that I'm in love with the world which now I've grown to love and identify as my true powerful sounding singing voice and I want to give you guys exactly the same thing now I promised you guys earlier that I was going to show you five steps to find your own true singing voice today and your authentic voice not sounding like somebody else but your own. And what I mean by that is you need to learn and master three different vocal elements in order to get the most out of your own voice. Now, earlier I demonstrated that I'm in love with that really, really light breathy sound. That's because I wasn't singing in chest voice. So step one, you need to actually learn to sing with your chest voice. What is chest voice? Chest voice is the name that we give to that bottom part of a singer's voice. Notes at the bottom part of the range are in the chest voice range. So rather than an ah, and I'm trying to sound really pretty, or I'm trying to sound like my favorite singer, or the opposite, ah, I wanna sound like Demi Lovato or Adele. Instead, just go back to the way that you say the word. Just go, ah, ah, 
while. So all of a sudden, I started actually singing in my real chest voice, and that's actually my real voice. The second step in finding your true voice is to learn to sing with the top part of your voice, what we call the head voice. So like for instance, uh, actually being able to sing from the top part of your voice and down. And the reason that this is important is because a lot of singers, especially guys, will just get trapped in only singing in their chest voice. So that like, done, done, on to the next one, done, I'm done, and I'm on to the next. And I'm doing my best Dave Grohl impression. However, what if you actually learn to sing with more of your head voice? So for instance, you could sing that on, wee, 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 wee. So that there's actually some tone to your actual voice there. So I'm not just doing my Dave Grohl impression. Instead, I'm doing done, done, on to the next one, done, I'm done, and I'm on to the next. That's actually my real voice. I'm not just done, done, where I'm just channeling my best Dave Grohl impression. And our third vocal element is actually learning to blend the chest voice and the head voice together and learning how to sing in a mixed voice. Now, the reason that you wanna to learn to sing in mixed voice in order to actually find your true voice is because most people are just going to imitate, again, their favorite artist. So you can think of that Elton John, Rocket Man. And I'm gonna be high. Hi. That's exactly what Elton does. And he does that because it sounds so cool and so dramatic. But if I actually learn how to sing in my mixed voice, then I can actually make that sound in my own real voice. So for instance, I might do that on a vocal exercise, like na 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 na. So that I can actually connect up to that top note so that I get a, and I'm gonna be high. All of a sudden, I'm actually in my real voice there rather than just trying to do my best Elton John impression. So if you learn to sing with chest voice, head voice, and your mixed voice, then you can actually sing all of the notes in all of your artist's favorite songs in your own voice without just imitating them. Now, I mentioned earlier that in addition to the vocal elements that make up finding your own vocal style and finding your own true voice, you also need to take into account a couple of musical elements. And the first musical element that you need to take into account is your musical genre. So a lot of singers will sing songs and genres that are totally wrong for them. As much as I'd love to sing gospel music, that is not what my voice is for. Like my voice is built for pop and maybe like kind of cleaner rock. It's not designed to just belt down, oh, like all the time, like some singers' voices are built to do that. So make sure that when you're actually choosing songs and choosing genres, make sure that you choose a genre that actually fits the kind of voice that you have. If you have a naturally raspy kind of voice, maybe singing rock is great for you. Or if maybe you have a really, really clean and bright and ringy voice like I do, maybe pop is a great place for you to start. So make sure that you've actually identified the right musical genre to be singing in. And our fifth and final step in finding your true voice is to choose songs that fit your voice. I cannot tell you how common it is that singers choose songs that are way outside of their range or way below their capability. So, you know, a tenor that sings Johnny Cash is not going to sound right. Even if his voice sounds great singing country, if he's singing a, a song that's too low in his voice, it's just not gonna sound right. I hear the train a coming, it's rolling round the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine. It's just not gonna sound right in my voice. However, if I find another country tune, just going along with that same example, that maybe sings a little bit higher, then all of a sudden my voice will open up and it will be so much better. So make sure that you also choose songs that fit the range of voice that you have. And you'll be amazed at how this really simple change will actually help you find your own true voice and your own voice within that music. Now, I know all of this sounds really cool and theoretical and you're like, wow, I, I can't wait. I, I, I'm sure I found my voice. But I wanna just give you one very, very simple exercise that you can use so that you can see how I can apply this to my own voice. And that way you can apply it to your own voice. So I'll just choose like a very, very popular, but a very, very distinct singer. So you can think of Ray LaMontagne's song, Jolene, that cocaine flame in my bloodstream. 
<laughs> See, it hurts my voice just to mimic that sound. I can make that sound. However, it doesn't sound or feel natural in my own voice. Instead, I'll just bring it back to my speaking voice. Going back to the first step in finding your voice, I need to sing with a little bit more chest voice. So rather than cocaine, and it being that really, really raspy sound, instead it's just that cocaine flame in my bloodstream. So my co when I hit Spokane, and all of a sudden it's actually in my voice. And a really, really simple way that you can do that and to trick yourself into doing it is just speak the words. Just say, cocaine flame in my bloodstream. Sold my coat when I hit Spokane. Go ahead and just say that, and then take the same feeling of speaking the words and put it onto the music. So that cocaine flame in my bloodstream becomes that cocaine flame in my bloodstream. It just sounds so much better and so much more natural for my singing voice. And guess what? I could actually perform that song for two hours on stage without hurting my voice. However, I can barely perform five seconds of it without hurting my voice if I'm trying to mimic the same sound of another singer. Guys, congratulations. By now, you should be super clear on what your own true voice sounds like and how to find it consistently. Now, again, I have to warn you, a lot of people don't like the sound of their singing voice, their true singing voice, when they first find it. I just want to encourage you to just try to push past that psychological barrier and start to embrace what the sound of your voice actually is. There's so much more to be gained by actually embracing the sound of your voice than by trying to mimic or imitate somebody else. And I believe that you know exactly what you need to do in order to find it every single time. Guys, if you found this video helpful, make sure to smash that like button, comment with the next kind of video that you wanna see me do, and subscribe and turn on notifications for this channel. Or if you want to improve your singing voice today, check out my complete singing course, Master Your Voice. The link to get on the waitlist is in the description.